make way for uh, Dean Blandino, the Fox NFL rules analyst, former vice president of NFL officiating, joining us on the program. Good to see you again. Let me start at the line of scrimmage in that moment with Kadarius Toney and the role that the official plays when he sees that Tony is offsides. So you see this throughout the game. And, and so line of scrimmage officials, receivers, there's that communication, a lot of it nonverbal. The receiver will look to the official. The official will make sure the receiver understands where the line of scrimmage is. And a lot of it is, I'm a receiver. I know I have to be off the line of scrimmage or on the line of scrimmage. So I look to the official. The official shows me with their leg, their foot, their front foot. Here's the line of scrimmage, and you can line up accordingly. And so in a situation like that, you're going to have that nonverbal communication. But when you're lining up offside, and as, as blatant as it was and as obvious as it was, you know, early in the game, if it's close, marginal, you'll warn the player. But in a situation like that, when you're that offside, you're going to get the call, whether it's in the first quarter or the fourth quarter. What if Tony looks to the official and asks for help in that moment? Yeah, and the official should give that give that help to that player. And I, I've seen some video, you know, online where there's there there's one shot. I don't know where the camera came from, but it looks like Tony quickly looks to the sideline. That is so fast. There's no way that he could have gotten any acknowledgement from the official with just a quick cursory glance over there. Typically, you'll see that with the receivers that are closer to the sideline and they'll look and they may even adjust their position based on what the official, you know, what they're getting from the official. But the official will give that help if the help is, you know, is asked for. Well, I mentioned this, that the official doesn't want to make that call. I mean, it's an incredible play. You don't want to be the story. And that's why, you know, Mahomes and Andy Reid were so upset that the officials and, you know, they make mistakes and, you know, they're going to be fine for the comments that they made. But an official, I don't think, goes, man, I haven't I haven't thrown a flag in a while. I'd like to get a little airtime here. No, no. And especially a line of scrimmage official, you're not even getting the airtime. You're giving the referee the airtime because you don't even get to make the announcement. But the thing is, a, a foul like that, that's a foul at the snap. The official throws the flag immediately once the ball is snapped. They have no idea that this is going to be an incredible play with Travis Kelsey throwing the ball back to Tony. They just see what they see. They see a violation. They throw the flag. They officiate the rest of the play. And I think all of those factors just led to this being controversial. Because if that's just an incomplete pass, it's not this It's not this gigantic thing that we're all still talking about. Was this a point of emphasis for officials this year? It it was. You know, when you look at offensive offside, that is not a call that had been made going into this season very often. From 2015 to 2022, the, all of those years, there was only 14 across the entire league. This year with the Tony penalty, there's already been 13. And this, to me, comes from the tush push, the brotherly shove, that play the officiating department has really put an emphasis on officiating the line of scrimmage more closely with players on and offside. And I think we've seen that now it's bled over to these other areas that are not tush push plays, but we're seeing, like you said, 13 in one year compared to the eight previous years, they're only being 14 total. It's, it's clearly a point of emphasis. Explain to me. And we saw this with the chiefs opening night where their tackles seem like they were back further. It's almost as if, the NFL is trying to give them a little bit of a head start to help against these edge rushers who are clearly more athletic than them. Uh, is that a point of emphasis to allow the tackles to be back a little bit more than maybe they should be? They're not on the line of scrimmage. They're not. You watch, watch the play with Tony. Look at the right tackle. Look at Taylor on that play. He's he's so far back, and they're both supposed to be on the line of scrimmage. So I think that that has been less emphasized. It started right. Remember Lions Chiefs opening night. We had the whole whole thing with Taylor not lining up on the line of scrimmage. So I think we are seeing less less restrictive in that area. And like you said, that's a key thing when you talk about the offensive line versus the defensive line. The defensive line is winning more often than not. Scoring is down. Passing yards are down. So you're going to give those tackles. I think the league is making that. You know, known to the officials, don't be overly technical. Let the tackle have a little bit of that head start. But again, 
you've got that part of it, and now you're officiating the other part, being on the line for receivers and other players, the tush-push play, more closely. And I think that's where teams sometimes struggle with the consistency. We're talking to Dean Blandino, Fox NFL rules analyst, former vice president of NFL officiating. What um, What's your biggest concern with officiating? I mean, I, uh, let me tell you mine, and that is it has to do with gambling. So when there is a, a call, that it's not just – Fan emotion. Now there's money at stake here. And I, I just, we're, we're headed towards something here. We, we are. And I, I worry about with these officials that they're trying to do a job that is almost impossible to be perfect. Uh, how big of a concern should that be? I think, it's a, I think it should be a very big concern. And you said it, they're trying to be perfect. And that's the standard for officiating. We, we, we are less... We're less accepting of a missed call as we are, you know, a drop pass or a missed block or or a wrong call on fourth down going for it or not. And no one's perfect. They can never reach that standard. And you hit the nail on the head with gambling because 25 years ago, right, the NFL didn't have to worry about gambling, right? That's illegal. That's not part of now it's legal. Now the NFL, you can't watch a game without seeing these gambling ads, the betting ads. We're, We're playing the Super Bowl in Las Vegas. We've got a team in Las Vegas, which 20 years ago, you would have, I would have never even guessed that. So you absolutely have to worry about these things and you have to give the officials better direction, make sure we can get the calls on the field correct, mitigate mistakes, and also use technology. I feel like we're using technology in some areas where it's probably not as important. We're moving the ball a yard here, maybe, maybe taking a couple of seconds off the clock in the third quarter. But let's get the big plays right. Let's mitigate those game-changing mistakes. I also wonder, when you spoke to officials, it, it's almost like I can throw a flag and I can pick it up. Therefore, I can kind of protect myself. You're asking for the home office to give you some help in the moment with these calls. Are we going to get to the point where everything is reviewed? Like getting the call right, is that's paramount here. It, it is paramount, but I think it's a balance. I don't think we can reofficiate every play. There's just two. There's 153, 154 plays in the game. There's there's seven officials. They're making all of them are making decisions before the play, during the play, and after the play. There's thousands of decisions that are being made, and the overwhelming majority are correct. But to reofficiate every play and replay, the game would just it would it would have no flow, no momentum. So I think you've got to find that balance. There's four or five plays in a game that decide a game. And we have to be perfect on those four or five and manage the rest of the game, mitigate mistakes. And I think that's kind of that 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 middle ground that that the NFL has to find. And I know people talk about full time refs. I I don't know. Well, tell me the difference if you're part time uh, referee uh, uh, or you're full time referee. How does that change how you call a game, how accurate you are? How much better are you? I don't I don't know if it it's hard to quantify, right? If the if the officials are 95% accurate now, does making them full time make them 98% accurate? It's impossible. They're never going to be 100% accurate. They are as full time as they can be during the season, right? Football's different than basketball and baseball and hockey. You don't have multiple games each week. You know, baseball baseball umpires aren't when they're working the games they're assigned, but on their off days during the season, it's not like they're at practice with the with the Dodgers or the Angels and they're and they're and they're practicing their calls at first base or or, or strike ball counts, things like that. So you have to find some things in the offseason for officials to do. You know, I think there's an opportunity there, but just making them full time or calling them full time, I don't think that solves anything. They're still they're still human beings that are officiating a game that is played by tremendous athletes. And you just have to continue to work to get them better, get them on the same page. I'm not saying there aren't opportunities for them to do more, especially in the off season, but I don't know if just calling them full time is going to make a big difference. And I tell people, if you ever get the opportunity to be on the sidelines of an NFL game and look at a bang, bang play, like the speed is what, you know, jumps out at you. When we watch on TV, we're like, how could they miss that? Well, when you're on the field and you're going, was that pass interference? It certainly looked like pass interference. Or that couldn't have been pass. It's right in front of you, and I I still couldn't make a call like that. The speed is what really stands out. 
It's exactly right. And and standing on the sideline, and, and there's that disconnect because you stand on the sideline and you watch that bang bang play, and you go, How do they ever get anything right? And then you <laughs> and then you and then you watch it, right? How do we get to evaluate? The official gets to see it once, full speed from, from their perspective. And we get to evaluate them and critique them from five different slow motion angles. And, oh, here's the reverse angle. And here's the low end zone shot. And we go, how did they miss that? And there's that disconnect. And and and, and I get it because we're not down on the field. We're not watching the game. But sometimes we're putting the officials in an impossible, an impossible spot because we're evaluating them to a standard that the human being can't reach. Always great to talk to you. And uh Thanks for joining us. Thanks for dumbing dumbing down this information so I could understand it, Dean. Thank you. You got it, Dan. Take Dean care. Blandino, Fox NFL Rules Analyst, former NFL VP of Officiating. He is working the Chiefs, Patriots, Bills, and the Cowboys game, where he gets to monitor that, and then they go, Dean, what did you see on that play? And then he gets to tell you what he saw.